Uh, I'm going to call the study session order at 6.30 p.m. on Monday night. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about ID number 23202, Stork Preservation Plan Study Session, Letter of Intent to the State of Stork Fund Application. It's all yours, Scout. I'm Scout Turnbach. I'm a planner two with the City of Littleton, and tonight we're going to be having a conversation about, a very high-level conversation about the preservation plan that the City of Littleton hopes to work with his, this Historical Preservation Board to produce and adopt to kind of guide the preservation efforts um, moving forward. So where we're kind of at in this preservation plan process right now is that it's very preliminary, and we're looking at, you know, we know that this is something that the City of Littleton wants, we know that this is something that the City of Littleton needs, and we're just going to start working on getting the pieces into place so that starting in 2024 we can take a more um, take more action on creating and adopting this preservation plan and so one of those resources that we want to have in place um, is uh, the state historic fund so the state historic fund offers competitive grants you can request up to 250,000 these grants are offered twice a year recently our own um, Geneva Lodge was a recipient of one of these grants for preservation work to restore and rehabilitate some of the existing building. And we're hoping to apply in October um, for uh, this technical assistance grant, for this competitive grant to fund some of the consulting and expert, ex expert services we're going to need for this preservation plan. Though that money can also be used to kind of develop more programming for this preservation plan and the like, kind of help with some of the campaign, some of the outreach and education events. So we have a couple of different things that we are hoping to um, do with this fund to support this preservation plan. But before we can actually apply for the grant, we need to submit a letter of intent. That letter of intent is due at least seven days before the um, application is actually um, submitted. The application deadline is October 3rd, and how it works is that the State Historic Office, they're gonna review our letter of intent, and they're going to assign it a color. Green means that you're proceeded to apply, and you'll be sent a link to the application. Yellow means that they have some additional questions, and they're gonna need some additional investigation into your application before they send you the application and let you apply. And red means that your request has just been denied, and you won't be sent an application for the grant. Um, so that's part of the reason why we're hoping to get this letter of intent done sooner rather than later, so that if it is yellow, if it is red, we can kind of um, adopt and figure out a game plan. So um, the letter of intent, um, it, it's a really basic form. Um, and so since we're starting with that, one of the things that we hope to bring to Historical Preservation Board, and really the kind of focus of this entire meeting is, in broad strokes, what are some of the priorities? Like, what can a preservation plan do for Littleton? What does the Historical Preservation Board see the, the preservation plan is doing for them? Um, and so we have some ideas of what that preservation plan could do, some primary object objectives that a preservation plan could help us achieve are to establish a work plan to guide not just the city preservation efforts, like how we run our preservation programming, but also the work that the Historical Preservation Board is doing. I've seen some preservation plans that establish like 10 or 20 year horizons to kind of really make sure that it's almost like a comprehensive plan for preservation. Ours can be at any sort of interval of time that you guys deem is appropriate, um, but it can kind of establish a path so that over the next few years we kind of know where we're going and we can communicate those objectives to city council, to the public, and to developers. A, a, a similar activity, a similar component is guiding activities of HPB really set out what the Historical Preservation Board can do, the sort of independent work they can produce, um, and how they can support both city efforts, but still kind of um, achieve the goals that all the Preservation Board members see for historic preservation in the city. It can identify critical areas where preservation resources are needed. I think the one that comes to my mind and comes to the mind of a lot of people is probably going to be Littleton Boulevard. We're seeing a lot of development change on Littleton Boulevard, and that's one area. I'm assuming that as we get more into this work, we're gonna identify other areas of the city where we're seeing a lot of redevelopment that might mitigate or threaten some of our historic buildings. It can catalog resources so that we have a really developed um, sense of what our historic buildings are, what their significance is, what their integrity is. And it can address how preservation intersects with other planning concerns. I think this is something that you will see tried to do, um, but I think that we still have some way to go in terms of you know, preservation planning and how you can be pedestrian friendly, how it can intersect with the public realm, how it can intersect with other private developments, um, and, and some of the, the different modes of preservation. Um, one of the things I wanna to touch on in the next slide is gonna be, you know, there's this new concept called overlay districts which are different than historic districts. And so looking at, you know, we have different tools in preservation that we can adapt to diff meet different needs. And so what are some of those um, 
areas? What are some of those other planning concerns? And, and do some of those preservation tools support those planning concerns like housing development, like sustainable, sustainable development and the like? <clears throat> Um, some high-level priorities that the city has um, is to establish a work plan to guide the preservation program for the next several years, whatever horizon that we think is most appropriate. We were thinking five years. Um, we want to be able to, through this survey plan, we want to be able to get to a point where the city comprehensively is pretty well surveyed and pretty well documented. I think that's one of the things that, you know, we've been talking a lot about the survey plan and the like. Like, something that we would hope for by the end of our preservation plan is to say, like, we've, we've gotten the city either in its entirety or, or the majority of it surveyed. Um, we want to identify the best strategies to meet those needs, kind of saying, you know, a historic district and an overlay district have different kind of, oh, yes. Do you want to explain what an overlay district is? Because I'm pretty sure she doesn't know. No, absolutely. So an overlay district is a uh, historic preservation planning tool, which kind of complements the zoning district. So we have other overlay districts in zoning, like a plan development overlay, in which a development has its own kind of unique customized zoning regulation specific to that area. Mm -hmm. An overlay district is very similar to a historic district, but it doesn't necessarily need to subscribe to all of the Secretary of the Interior federal standards. It doesn't need to meet all of the historic preservation principles outlined by the National Park Service. Um, you can be a bit more flexible in, in kind of what you want to save. I think one of the things that we're looking at from a Littleton Boulevard, one of the things that we're seeing come up again and again is actually pole signs. You know, our, our code doesn't allow for pole signs. Pole signs are pretty significant on Littleton Boulevard, and, you know, they can be pretty dominant. Some of them are quite, like, I think the Taco House one we talked about recently is being um, very characteristic of that property. And so what are some ways that an overlay code we could use some, some of those more flexible tools, such as an overlay district, to preserve what we want to preserve without <coughs> getting... Um, bogged down in some of the overly prescriptive standards that we don't think are necessarily appropriate for that area. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if there are any more questions or anything like that, feel free to ask throughout. The other thing <coughs> that we at the city are hoping at the end of this is um, kind of a, a recommended list, but also a schedule for code changes to the ULUC specific to historic preservation. Um, I know that that's been an interest expressed by the board before, is like we need to amend the code, and we do that. There's a process already in place every year to amend that code. Um, so we would like some more to have a plan with HPB about how to amend that code, what are the priority sections, um, and what is the timeline for, for doing that look like. If we could break it down into, you know, potentially through this process, some um, immediate changes that are needed, some changes that can be a little bit further down the road. Um, and we also do have the ability to fix what's called Scrivener's errors. Um, so those are things like font, uh, like typographical errors, spelling errors, and the like. We've had some tables that have errors. And those things can be fixed kind of on the fly. So um, kind of going through the code and seeing what we want to fix through there. So those are the city priorities. These are all the things that we, th we think we can get out of a, a preservation plan. Um, what we're going to be using this funding for is this professional technical assistance, hiring a consultant to help us with some of that survey work we did identify through our old survey, through our previous study session, that while a lot of the city can be surveyed by us, there are going to be some components that do need, you know, a preservationist uh, research and approach to help us kind of uh, nail down what is significant in the integrity of some of these buildings. But then we're also ha hoping to, you know, develop some public engagement resources and, and public engagement um, opportunities through this to get the citizens involved in historic preservation. So those are kind of our, our two big things for what we think the funding is. And that's kind of the background of where we're coming from for this initial letter of intent. Um, the discussions we have for staff are, you know, <laughs> what are some strengths and weaknesses of historic preservation in Littleton today? Like, what are some um, things that we can capitalize on? And, and what are some issues that kind of need are critical and threatening our historic resources? Um, and what are the high-level objectives that HPB wants from the preservation plan? like very high level, three to five things that you think that the preservation plan can and should do for Littleton. Um, and then another piece is critical tasks necessary prior to, to a preservation planning kickoff. Like what is information, what are resources that the HPB needs before we can make a preservation plan? Um, so starting off at that first question, strengths and weaknesses. Um, and we can just kind of shout them out or we can have like a, a in 
in discussion, however you guys want to handle that. May I back up from yes. that question and, and just um, ask some questions and yeah. uh, talk about the, the general um, that we're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, one is, um, first of all, I'm really excited to hear the words preservation plan. I mean, that's just cool and it's very much needed, but it's also going to be a lot of fun to, to put it together. It's going to be a lot of work. Yes. And I'm glad it's your project <laughs> instead of my project. We are a working board. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I'm very, very excited to hear this. And I immediately, when I, I just made all kinds of notes, um, but you know, back when we were working on the ULUC, I think that was probably two or three years ago now. It was like 2020. 2020. Yeah. yeah, it was adopted in October 2020. 2021, so I imagine that most of that work was done. Oh we, my we, gosh. We did most of it on Zoom, I think. Yeah, like yeah. Can we get a copy of that, like, emailed to us, or is it the one that's on the web? A copy of the ULUC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it okay. is the one that's on the web. Yeah, okay. it has not changed. But um, we did uh, a lot of kind of visioning work at that time about what we wanted to see in a preservation plan and what some of the resources would be to help us put that together. And um, I don't have any of those notes now because I always um, get rid of my notes and work product when you know, some. it's finished. Um, but yeah, so we we did a, a lot of stuff okay. that you, oh, you might look at because I know it exists. Yeah, it exists I, I, I'm in so the sorry. City someplace. I did not know that. Oh yeah, and um, and it was uh, there was there were even timelines presented on this is when we're going to do it. And you know how it is um, when you're developing that kind of plan. Some sometimes they slip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we did a, a lot of that, and um, that is available. Okay. And um, yeah, and it's it's you know it's a good thing. And then um, also because we're a CLG, the state has expectations of us, and they also want us to succeed. And they have a ton of resources available to us. Um, you know, putting together, first of all, they want us to get this grant. Mm -hmm. You know, they really do. And um, they, they, you know, there are people at the state, you know, resources there that you can really be very honest with about, you know, how, what's our best shot here? And they will, they will help with that. And then there's also um, putting together a preservation plan kind of from whole cloth starting with a blank sheet of paper is really, really hard. Mm -hmm. But um, there are all kinds of, you know, uh, resource or um, resources, but preservation plan templates and best practice ten, uh, preservation plans that have been put together by the state. And they're also vetted in that regard. It's, it's like, you know, here's an area that everybody has a problem with and you know there are lawsuits abound and this this uh this is is good you won't be in trouble if you do this you know what i mean yes they're they're just vetted and um so there i mean that would be a fantastic little place to start oh i don't have a blank sheet of paper yeah and the state historic office they do have those templates and and part of their statewide preservation plan website has those templates and stuff so we'll definitely i've looked at some of them briefly but yeah we'll, we'll be kind of using those as well yeah and the, the folks in the, uh, the state office, the preservation office, um, they, again, they're really working for us. Mm -hmm. um, they want us to succeed, and they, they're really smart, and they love this stuff. They would be more than, you know, it's like, oh, wow. And they, they, they've been kind of, you know, interested over the years that Littleton do this, and um, they, they will, I'm sure, be thrilled to help in, in any way that they can. So that's a, that's a, a good resource to, to plumb. <laughs> yeah, they've developed statewide contexts. I think there's 10 of them. That Historical contexts. Historical contexts. You can just plug right into them. So they cover all the broad areas. I haven't looked at them recently. I did read a few of them when they were writing them several years ago. 
Perfect. And now I did not know that, that there had been um, previous discussions with HPB about the preservation plan. Uh, my bet on that. So I'll definitely do some additional research before bringing another preservation plan item, um, study session item to you guys, just so that I can um, brush it more on the work that's already been done. Well, for it, sure. it, it just might be helpful. Yeah, yeah, it, definitely. As I recall, we kind of had bullet ideas on, on things that we wanted to include and things that were really important. And, and um, but unfortunately, I, I did not save that stuff. Nice. I saved a big pile, so I'll go back and look and see if I have some okay. of it. Thank Oops. you. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure that some of these meetings were recorded and the like, and I'm sure we yep. have some study session yep. packets they and were the all like. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, Zoom. yeah, so. So, Kim, didn't you develop, like five or six years ago, a, uh, a long range plan or something? Um, With yes. Amazon? Yeah, that was, it was before that, wasn't it? It was a long time. Yeah. I mean, it was part of her work, the work plan. It was part of a work yeah. plan that might it's have like five or six years or more, more than that. Two years before maybe. you became chair. Okay, when, when Pam, Pam was still here. Well, yeah, when Pam was, yeah. And, and Mike, yeah. yeah. Mike was very involved. We had that long sheet. And yes. Had long yes, range plans. yes, I yeah. remember that. I can remember working so on that. There might be a lot of stuff from file digging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have some work plans from Andrea, but I don't, they definitely weren't from five to six years ago. They were, they, they're, no, I think more recent. Oh, recent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, and they were, I think, more specific to like her job as the preservation planner and not like historic preservation in Littleton. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I haven't seen any of that stuff in our, we have this work planning folder and I haven't seen any of that stuff there, but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely dig into some of our old, case notes and see what we yeah. can find. I'm just kind of remembering the faces around the table at that, that time. And Lisa Hood was very much involved in that. Chris was involved in that. There, and, and um, you know, there, there was a, a lot of, I think, good work done that you might be able to benefit from. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then one other thing, I was watching the video. I was just going through the website. And I looked at the historic video that Kelly did a long time ago. I thought I'd watch it again. And I, I forgot that there was this true grit. HLI and the Preservation Board around 2019 had this thing called uh, True Grit. And there was a series of several meetings. And I just remember, because I'm in one of the pictures. But there were like 70 people involved in these meetings, Scout. And if you can find anything in Andrew's notes about what came out of True Grit, Okay. That may help guide some of the discussion for you in the future. Okay. Uh, for this plan. And she had mentioned doing True Grit, um, but I had thought it was like a, a program that like was being put on in in all sorts of different municipalities. So I, I think we might have something in her her files. I'll definitely double check. Yeah, I think there were. I don't know if anybody here participated in them, two. but I think there were like two or three. I don't meetings. even remember that. Yeah, I remember I've never heard meeting of it. with HLI. Two thousand nine is when. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, I was. Yes. I was. Oh, no, two thousand nine. <laughs> <laughs> I also heard twenty nineteen, so I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Two thousand nine. It's a long, long time ago. Yeah, Ancient history. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't but it's, it's just, it's incredible how, um, no, I you know, they've, they've like just 20. got templates for everything. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, actually, as a benefit of, um, you know, attending CPI, they've got all kinds of technical sessions, but they're all on Zoom. So, you know, you can, you can, you can watch those, and they talk specifically about doing some of these things. And I did go to the technical session for this grant at the most recent CPI and like met the grant right. administrators and stuff. And, and that's one of the things that they offer after the letter of intent is that um, if it's yellow or red, they'll, they'll have a meeting with you. So that's another reason we wanted that 30 days in advance so that like yeah. if, if it was for, for whatever reason not in the green category, then we can meet with them individually and yeah. um, have further conversations about, you know, what what would need to be done to, to move us into kind of the direction that they were, that they're hoping for us to go. Yeah, and also from CPI, um, this was a few years ago. See, good use of Littleton dollars to send me to CPI because I'm remembering all of this. Um, Colorado Springs did a, a pretty amazing um, preservation plan in Colorado Springs, and that it was tough. It was citizens and, and the city, and um, they are, they are very proud of that plan, and 
and you know they would be happy to share <laughs> i'm sure all of the the things that they did and, and what was really important to them because they were really nice people and that is like one of the the, the models that we've been looking i'm at, not so. surprised i'm not surprised they gave a presentation two years ago maybe three it, maybe it was a few years ago two yeah. or three but just on plans and they, they talked about it at CPI. So if, I don't know if you're a member of CPI Scout or, but if you are, you can go find that video and just yeah. watch it. I, yes, I believe that we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was very interesting. That Colorado Springs one was very interesting. And, and this will, uh, again, I mean, it's a lot of work, but boy, is this gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm jealous. No, it, it's very exciting. And I think the city of Littleton is, is very excited to yeah to kind of incorporate this in our long-term planning, sure. which, you know, we're looking to build out our long-term planning and right. kind of um, make a more comprehensive vision, and this is definitely part of it. Any more general comments, and then we'll get into the questions? No, all righty. Go for it. Um, so I guess we can take the first one. Uh, what are some strengths in historic preservation in Littleton today? What are some... Um, elements of our programming, elements of our board, elements of our design review um, uh, that, that you guys think that we're doing really well. Well, I think the most amazing thing of all is that we have a downtown historic district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I can't say enough about that. And then, um, you know, knowing kind of big picture where to turn our attention. I think the spotlight's on Littleton Boulevard, and that's that's a, a, a very strong thing, knowing where to go. We have four very comprehensive surveys that kind of built on each other. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of recommendations in them that can um, help guide towards where we need to go in the future surveys of the city. That's right, the old graduate school thing. First thing you do is go to the bibliography. Yes, go to the bibliography. <laughs> what are the recommendations? <laughs> How about some weaknesses? Some areas that we need to improve our historic preservation. Can I jump in with one more strength? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Just to state the obvious, we have a, a functioning long-lived HPD in the city. It's not like we would need to start mentioning it. No, that is excellent. Yeah, yeah, stay in the, the active obvious. HPD. Well, Littleton's been talking about preservation for a long time. Right. I mean, it's kind of ingrained in the community. I mean, just, the, yes. we got the historic district we've been mm -hmm. talking about since the 1980s. Yeah, it's not a new idea. We're it's trying to graft it on, is the point mm -hmm. I'm trying to make. Took a while to get the district, but you know, the building's been saved and they've been rehabbed and remodeled, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a great point. I mean, like a lot of the property owners I work with, a lot of citizens I work with, know that historic preservation, you know, they know what a district is versus a landmark. So there's a familiarity with a lot of Littleton residents. Yeah. I also think that you've been really good for it. I didn't personally know your predecessor or how that ran, but a lot of the feedback that I get from the community about Scout's ability to like do research and like know what's going on is really helpful. Oh, thank you. So, That's great. It's true. <laughs> yeah. That is good to hear. I think one of the weaknesses we have in Littleton is that we always seem to be just a step behind. And I don't know if that's just the nature of historic preservation. Um, like, like the mid-century mile, we're we're not there yet, and we're losing things. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a weakness, but that may be a weakness that, that occurs across the nation in every historic preservation board. So you mean kind of like where the development pressures are kind of threatening historic resources, we're responding to that right. rather than okay. okay. chasing after and reacting rather yeah. than... Yeah, we are, uh, you know, dealing with, um, in historic preservation, um, you're dealing with a diminishing data set, you know, that the, the resources are, yeah, um, they're not going to get any bigger. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And, and they are, they're, um, they, we are losing some. I think it's one of those things when we went to the 
historic Littleton Inc. event, the speaker said to not make it difficult. And I think there is this looming fear of HPV being difficult, so people are trying to maneuver around it, and that's what the problem is, is that, like, we're going into something being the bad guy in some property owner's minds. Mm -hmm. And if we could, you know, include them in the discussion, I think we'd get more camaraderie from them instead of, like, rebellion. And early on in the discussion. Right, like right away. Because, like, I think um, one of the owners of a property on Alamo, um, you know, understands the Historic Preservation Board rules. And it's, you know, if it's beyond disrepair, it's no longer in effect. And, like, that's the intention. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's a, a very good point. And sometimes we are chasing it and, and we don't see a project or even know that you know a, a, a property is um, vulnerable mm -hmm. um, until you know the, the person the property owner presents plans right which are expensive right mm -hmm. and and then there's like a slow process they I think personally speaking because I am familiar with property owners, I think having an expedited HPV process where they can come in and apply and go back to back and get answers in a month would be a dream for them. And to come to something in agreement because, you know, during this time they have to pay the bills and it's it's huge. I mean, I don't own historic property um, personally. My father does. But I know what those property tax bills are and when you're waiting months and months and months, we, we become the enemy instead of somebody to work with. And I think that we can all get along. They bought a historic building for a reason. Like, they're into it. Like, nobody signs that contract and goes, oh, I don't like this, you know? But yeah. if we could figure out a way to, like, create a really good work environment with property owners who come in and promptly handle things, I think it would really change the flow and the excitement about HPV. So it would be great if property owners literally, when they kind of were just thinking about what if, right. you know, I did this, you know, what, what, maybe I want to do this, it, it, that kind of early, early, early on dream, right. you know, back of the envelope um, conversation, if that could take place. Right. You know, yeah, and if we kind of guide them, them instead of like them come to us with a plan and we turn it down and then they have to come back in a few months, like if we could like hold their hand through the process and get to something, I think it would just it would be incredible for the property owners and you wouldn't hear the rumblings of somebody letting a building deteriorate because they believe that HPV is unworkable. Those are good points. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> and that like echoes, you know, just general feedback we get about development review. Yeah, I mean, I think that it takes, and it takes time. Everybody says it takes time. I mean, I've, op I've had businesses open and they expect to open in six months. And if they say six months, it's going to be 18, no matter what. <laughs> like nothing is ever done on time. But I think if we had, even like, I researched into it at a point, um, like certain HPVs have expedited processes where there are like fees involved that go into an HPV, but like you get to rush a process for somebody. But also, if it you know just that basic relationship that you it know would be helpful. you you find out you know they feel free to come to HPV or Scout. Um, you know, probably not HPV, but Scout the city, right? Um, and and say. I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about, and that would be a great time. Right. And I think, like, I don't know how on the record this is or how, what it is in terms of, but I know that, like, from property owners, there was a plan for, like, a boutique hotel on Alamo, and it was talked about. And then what I've heard before HPV was that Andrea 
rush to preserve Alamo and block it. So now there's like this idea of like not going to communicate. That's not true. Okay, and I believe that people talk. <laughs> we we were we did a downtown survey. The board actually wanted Alamo in. We didn't get Alamo in. Okay. But this okay. is a discussion that began in two thousand and one. Good. So it's not new to anybody. Okay. In downtown. To add on to her thoughts, she's talking about properties that we already know are historic. Yeah. We what we need to step further is to have the whole city surveyed so that we are aware that there's properties out there. Even today, I looked on the Littleton Legacy map to see how that worked, mm -hmm. and there are properties that I know that are historic, built 1910, 1920, that are not even, they're not marked on that map at all because mm -hmm. we haven't surveyed them. Mm -hmm. So my, that's I think one of our weaknesses that we have not finished surveying and we need, we need to do that and do that as soon as possible because that's another place where we lose you know our our historic uh, character in the city. We lost you know another another mid-century modern house in Aberdeen Village. You know goes down, or a um, or a small little um, you know craftsman home goes down because they wanted the property for you know for the lot. Mm -hmm. So I I think that's a huge thing we need to do is get the surveys yeah. going. Yeah. Okay. Just a, a quick note to uh, uh, Board Member Murab's uh, comments. We do have defined timelines that are in the code for historic preservation applications. And we do have um, no fees for most historic preservation applications. So, you know, there are some baked in code pieces to expedite things to some degree. Oh, cool. Although I appreciate the comment of, you know, the handholding piece, uh, how can we, how can we uh, make that even a smoother process? But there are there are uh, requirements. Uh, once a, a COA is at, applied for, it has to be into uh, Planning Commission, I think, 45 days. To the historical preservation board, uh, 45 yeah. days after yeah, it's, it's been be. determined to be complete. Right. Didn't we streamline that a little bit last year also, where there are things that just now the office can okay and right. it doesn't have to come Yeah, and we've done more things administratively. Yeah. And so that is something we're, that we're we actually to some yeah. hope to bring back because that's. There's only been one COA since that sheet was adopted that, that's been administrative. Mm -hmm. um, and we're finding that some of the things that maybe, um, and this is kind of jumping forward, well, never mind. I'll, I'll save this for another study session because that is something that we want to talk about as we continue to build out this, this preservation plan policy. It's all layers. I mean, I'm gonna pay the <laughs> district is just another layer on top of the existing zoning plan. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has to plan ahead to go through it. Boulder has a different process. I don't think Littleton may not want to develop it, but we see a lot more commercial properties, but they work very closely with the developer, with a separate group, to make sure a building meets the standards before it's presented to the board. So there isn't a back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much, you meet the standard, you're going to the board for an, an up and down, yes or no. It sort of happened with shift in Littleton. But right now, that would probably be in conflict with the way the boards and commissions are probably going to work. So it's something just to talk about. But every city does things a little differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think one of the things, um, in terms of like the development and the development community piece that we struggle with is, you know, there isn't a whole lot of awareness about historic preservation um, from the development community. Um, and oftentimes, um, developers just need to hire an architect. Um, and, and that is something that we have found, like, uh, you have to communicate historic preservation and then you have to communicate why, like, some, some additional expertise is needed. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of developers are so used to, you're doing a foundation, you need a structural engineer. There's, not, there's no question as to why that is. Um, so that's some of the, the, the issue we've just seen a lot in the development process is education, both on what historic preservation is, what the process looks like, what the, the um, products that we're asking for are, um, how applications are evaluated. I, I think that there is a lot that we can do in the, the education realm. Yeah. Um, and we've tried to, to start building out some of that with, we had a meeting with Littleton Business Chamber, um, We've had some conversations internally with our economic development division. We've had, I think, a bit more success, especially the, personally, and I haven't been involved much more 
in previous years, but the grant program has offered a lot, um, an opportunity to develop more personal relationships with landlords. And so I, I do think that we are um, starting to develop relationships with landlords in which they can call us when they have concerns or issues. But I mean, it is, it is time consuming. Um, yeah, that's yeah. A, it really key. Those relationships and education yeah. are absolutely key because by the time, you know, an owner or a developer or whatever <coughs> it might be, when they actually have a plan to come into the city with to get a building permit or, you know, something along those lines, though, that plan that they've paid for, um, they are married to it. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to say, well, you know. Let's tweak the plan. Yeah. Well, and we're actually having like a little bit of challenge with developers at this time where like there's this quest for like maximum flexibility mm -hmm. at the same time, like maximum speed. And so one of the things that we're finding is like um, when we're beginning an application and we're trying to take it through our process as quickly as possible, changing your application in a way that you might think is minor has pretty significant consequences. Um, and, and that's where... I've run into, you know, some frustration with the timeline is like, well, we're getting close and then they want to change a major component because of cost, because of material, you know, for some other development related component. And then like, uh, um, it isn't just like, it isn't always easy to plug that new component in and proceed. Um, and so I think, yeah, that comes down again to education is like, you know, how are you being evaluated and stuff? And, and what are the sorts of changes you can... Uh, you have that flexibility on. And we might be wandering a little. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Sorry. Uh, this isn't I unique think, to Littleton, by the way. Yeah, no, no, right. definitely. Not, no. no, it's not. I think there are some strengths that are associated with our current process and some weaknesses. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, right. And there's lots of things we can work on. Now, another strength would be the second survey that Littleton did in 2001 that was set up to look at the development, history, and expansion of the city. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I mean, I, I wrote the scope for that, and it was set up for future surveys so that you can tell where the city expanded by decade. That way, we know where the historic resources are. So we don't have to survey South Park. There's no need to go to South Park and survey it. So using our existing survey reports, and we have two very good ones, the context from mid-century modern and Lilton Boulevard. You couldn't ask for a better person to have done that than Diane and um, Paglia for that survey. I mean, it's so strong. So that's a huge strength to build off on. One thing we are, a weakness in Littleton is we haven't addressed our agri, the survey is focused on downtown, not the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. So we really need to broaden out to look at our agricultural history, there's a lot of buildings remaining spread around the community, especially in our neighborhoods on this side of the river. Very little has ever been addressed on the other side of the river. Right. So I've always been and focused on you, this side. And there's good stuff up there. And there's some good stuff over there. it's disappearing. It is. And we've never looked at our uh, pre-World War II industrial heritage, which we don't have a lot remaining, but it's significant, not only locally, but statewide and nationally, what happened here in Littleton. And so that's, that's, those are things that we need to identify, and so we can focus on, on those resources that need to be protected. Okay. Thank you. We um, talked a little bit about social heritage, too, or uh, 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 several study sessions ago. Yeah. Kind of, it seems like that's an area that that we don't have much at all on, right? much of anything. Yeah. Um, and something to develop more of. And that can come out of a preservation plan. Yeah. The social part is very interesting because um, Littleton was a leader. Now, it may not necessarily be tied to a, a um, building, but it could be people, places, or yeah. site. Are you thinking like the Human Relations Council, that kind of thing? Or? Yeah, that housing. We were right. at one of the first housing. Yeah. Interfaith Community Services, No Homelessness. ICS. Started here. IFCS yeah. started in Littleton. Interfaith, the one off of like mm -hmm. Bannock and Ninth? It, yep. Started here. Not Bannock and Ninth, no. There's a lot of ICS. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's, that's, they're located in Ango and uh, IFTS. Sorry. IFCS. Okay, because. Interfaith Community Services. Used to be uh, Interfaith, interfaith task, force. task Force. 
Oh, but okay. it started okay, this is here a in Middleton. Group that I'm thinking. Okay. South Platte Park. You know, there's all these things that came out of Littleton of the people who were here in the 90s. McCrary talks about it a little bit in his book, but we need to go into a little bit more depth. That would, that social history then would guide us where we can identify places in Littleton to preserve, even if it's a site. It doesn't have to be a building, but it can be a site. This thing happened here. And, and I think that there's a lot of opportunities to memorialize, you know, yes. for sites and for other places that might not be there. There's still opportunities to commemorate them. Um, there is, those and, events. and we should and, do that. Yeah, and we should look at ways to do that and stuff, too. So I, that'd be something, definitely something I'm interested to flesh out more as we go through this process is, like, how would that look? Maybe even a social timeline, you know, how they do those timelines in Newsweek or... In, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah that, that would be a really cool product to have at the end. I mean, Martin Luther King was brought to Littleton. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It, these are things that that makes Littleton great, that happened in the 50s and 60s and early 70s um, because of the people that were here. And that's what made the city great socially, progressively, growth-wise, everything we see around us. We haven't really gone into a lot of depth on discussion or researching that over the years. Yeah, and I think that that's something that we want to kind of flesh out more, for sure. And I wonder if, um, because, you know, really um, delving into our social history, it, it's we're not the only city that hasn't paid a lot of attention no. to this. So there's a, a, we could be a, a, another leader in terms of really uh, documenting this and taking advantage of it. Um, in our city, but um, I would a lot of these folks that were instrumental in in these things I, I think are pretty elderly or they've passed on now. Past, yeah. And so it'd be great to check and see if the Littleton Museum had oral histories There's so few people alive that we may want to do oral histories of. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Luther King visit. There's a really, PBS did a nice one. Yeah. Do you guys have um, good, do you guys, so the museum is starting an oral history project. Um, Another one. And I don't know who the program lead will be, um, but I'll try and find that out so that I can provide that contact information to you guys. So you, as you come up with ideas of who should be interviewed, um, that you can send them to, to them. So. Sam. Sam Houston? Yeah. Okay, I, I was going to say Sam or Jenny, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to put... Okay, perfect. Yeah, so Sam Houston, I'll make sure to provide that contact information um, for, the, for the oral history component. They've done a lot of oral histories with people already. Yeah. Okay, they, they were saying that they're going to, like... Start again. Yeah, do a whole big no, program. They, they started. Oh, okay, they have? Cool. Any other strengths and weaknesses? No. We're perfect. Probably. <laughs> yeah, no strengths. No, no more so right. Perfect. Don't ever change. <laughs> Probably the only weakness would be, and this is being addressed with the economic development focus groups right now, and on the historic preservation um, uh, focus group we want to have in a couple of weeks. But Littleton Boulevard hasn't developed the last 40 years. All of a sudden, the pressure now is happening. A lot of really nice things are beginning to happen at Littleton Boulevard. Um, and if anything's going to change the character of Littleton, it's going to be what happens on Littleton Boulevard. Because there isn't anything else. you got Mineral and Littleton Boulevard. That's it. And Littleton Boulevard is the heart and center of the city. Uh, coming down to downtown, it's a link between Broadway and downtown, as we all know. So the biggest weakness is probably development's beginning to happen much faster. We're reacting. So we're, we yeah, are reacting. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we and we did lay the groundwork. How many years ago did did Diane Ray do the? Yeah, the yeah. Mile. With the, like the, six, with five, six the, years ago. Mid mile. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. And, and we did start to socialize with a handful of property mm -hmm. owners. To socialize that 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 whole concept and exactly. plan, and exactly. there were plans to do banners and all kinds yeah. of neat stuff. We have lost coffee that's done really good, and then of course yeah. the Trade Cricket. My God, yeah. yeah. But then there's that building that they tore down, yeah. Littleton yeah. Brewing. Well, yeah, that's that little garage. The Ralph yeah, the yeah. The yeah. Little Ralph Shop garage. Mm -hmm. And then that's so motor I like that building. I like it too. too. We have a lot of little gas stations around the city. So yeah, yeah. I was looking at them, but. But the Grand Station used to be one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. There's like a 
a Lubin latte place. I forget what street. It's not, no, it's not Lubin. Yeah, it's it's had that beer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like right yeah. off yeah. Hilton Boulevard. Yeah. 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 Sorry, everyone spoke at once. Powers. Powers. Like okay. Side. I drive by every Sunday morning. There's oh, one in Wheat Ridge. Is it now? Huh? Says there's one in Wheat Ridge. Is there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like they're doing something. Yeah. I saw someone outside the other day because I drive by there all the time. We have a lot of old gas stations. Mm -hmm. Not to confuse them with all the new gas stations, yeah. but there are several around. I mean, where um, the, the sushi place that your dad has, that's so an old gas station. The Mansard Room building in the corner of Littleton, Main Street, this gas station. Yeah. You know, there's several along yeah. Broadway, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think that even came up in our survey plan discussion, specifically old gas stations. I think somebody had mentioned that yeah. is a particular there's so many of them. Transportation yeah. theme. Yeah. That yeah. Amy and I worked on it several yes. years ago. I mean, this, it's amazing how transportation really, yeah. and the automobile, mm -hmm. but transportation yeah. in general era, really guided. Just defined. Yeah. Back to the um, the Cherry Cricket and the and, um, Littleton Boulevard. I went to that streetscape um, committee meeting a couple weeks ago, and as I looked around the table, I realized I knew some, some people. And an architect that we know very well moved, bought a building next to the Cherry Creek and moved his architecture firm there last year. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Right. This movement yep. coming in. John Matthews. John he moved Matthews. from downtown to there. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there is, there's movement that I wasn't aware of. So it's like, okay, things are, things are moving. There are plans and developments. So we have, to, we have to get on top of it. Like, right. I asked him if he wanted landmark building. He's like, oh, what's in it for me? But then he goes by <laughs> and he shows me all the cool stuff inside. Yeah. But that the outreach, we need, we, well, that gets later, but there's a need to be a, a direct outreach to property owners on some of these buildings. So. And that speaks to the urgency of getting this preservation right. plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, together right now. Yeah. So um, kind of building on that, like that urgency, what are like the, the main high level objectives that you guys think this preservation plan needs to accomplish? Um, so I guess one thing I'm hearing is like Survey City and Protect Littleton Boulevard. Yes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put the word protect, but redevelop it. Redevelop, yeah, just preserve. Be aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's character. We spent a lot of time on UIUC talking yeah. about Littleton Boulevard and identifying some of its significant features. Yeah. And one of them is all the buildings are set back 20 feet on the south side. You don't want to, except for a couple, you don't want to necessarily violate that. And there's a big discussion with the, with the uh, consultants at the time about that. Yeah, right. That, that's something very unique in the commercial yeah. area. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'd like to see us identify what we think might be coming down the pipe. And an example would be, we lost the trees on, on in downtown, and Rick said a couple meetings ago, oh, we might have to talk about awnings. And... Not that we, not that that's what we need to do, but that I think HPB needs to be aware of what might lie down the road a little bit, and, yeah, and where, where think the about what, are. yeah, and think about what we might have to do or might have to be educated mm -hmm. on, or mm -hmm. okay. Um, uh, the, another piece that that you mentioned was um, to to survey the city be or yeah, survey the city beyond downtown. To yeah. look for agricultural and other sites beyond the historic district. I have that all in caps. Survey Good. whole city. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you got it. That is the first thing. I just wanted to point out the non-downtown. For sure, no, yeah, absolutely. Would we ever get like plaques for the buildings? Mm -hmm. um, do do landmarks have, have plaques. Yeah. Right. Okay. We tried to take a run at that a few years ago, and it could be potentially worth another run. Yeah, I think it would just create like understanding for people mm -hmm. and appreciation. And yeah, and pride, just an acknowledgement of it being a historic yeah. building, yeah. not mismatched architecture. Yeah. So are you thinking like all of the build? Because I don't think all of the buildings have it. Like I know all of the buildings from when it was the Main Street Historic District, or most of them have that, but not yeah. any of the ones included yeah, in the most of, recent downtown. Some of them certainly not all. No, I don't know. I've seen. I've seen the. I've seen the yeah, landmarks. Just oh, those are the individually so. landmarked on yeah. Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's a, a great thing down the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. too, I mean, maybe to get the social history in, like 
I spent a lot of time in Key West and, you know, like on every street sign, it's like something happened here or this person lived here or even just not even yeah. necessarily buildings, but just like general happenings in an area on a plaque that people could stop and instantly yeah. So read. sign, interpret yes. signage, yeah. wayfinding. Okay, great. Uh -huh. And then I think for me, um, a, a high level objective on uh, for one, two, three, four, five is an outcome that I'd like to see sooner rather than later, and that is an ordinance, a, a preservation ordinance. That, that, that's, yeah, well, that's important. I mean, it, it's just, uh, we've been talking about redoing our ordinance for years now, and, you know, we need to do it. <laughs> and this is my own ignorance. Like, what is a preservation ordinance, and how is it different than the EYUC? I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, you know, right here. I volunteer her. <laughs> well, I my understanding is that we have what we need in the ULUC, so that's what we're looking to y'all for. I I mean, if there's a gap, then I would like to know about it. But what are you specifically pointing well, out? Well, actually, what happened was um, with the ULUC because we had a lot of discussion on the ordinance. We were going. We what we the board said adopt the state master ordinance. Oh, so you're talking something more specific to Littleton. Half of it got there, but no. What the state did was, and this has happened all around the country, they developed, um, what are they? Matt? Model ordinances. Model ordinances. Mm -hmm. So the model ordinances address all the legal aspects. And this is something I think the National Trust started and the uh, Association for Preservationists, uh, state preservationists and local preservationists, but they developed model ordinances that are, that address all the laws and are consistent from state to state. And Colorado would like everyone to stop them because then when things, when you get in trouble and you go to the courts, you're following a, a procedure that, that is defined. And you can't get caught, you know, with something that you did wrong. And we tried to get that whole model ordinance put in. It didn't end up there. Okay. So that's the that's the, the issue. But but okay. I think though that um, back when the ULUC was happening and, and we were going through all of the meetings, you know, what do we need? Because everybody reviewed it, planning reviewed it, we reviewed it, and and there was you know again a whole list of things that need to be quote fixed or tweaked. Yeah. It was a painful process. And um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and and you know that exists and. And the understanding was, well, you know, we will, we will do that. Um, but it has been a few years, and we, we really do need to do it. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand. By adopting a preservation ordinance, you're referring to, like, incorporating the state model into the UOUC and correcting issues that were identified previously in the UOUC. There's not a lot. We, I just want to make sure that I'm like not missing that there's this whole other law that I'm no. supposed to be paying we attention to. We incorporated a lot of it, but there 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 were some gaps, as okay. you all recall, when we were going through U U L U C. Okay. And it was like, okay, you know, we know those, we have them right here, okay. and um, we are going to go back and quote fix it. You know okay. what I mean? Tweak so it. more of a comparison of what the model code was to see yeah. what is missing from our own UOUC. Well, we specifically I have a list of all that. Yeah. Yeah. I already have a list so, of all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And it sounds like that this is the document. So I'll go through our, our old yeah. records and reach out to Rick yeah. if needed. But that's just, that's sort of separate to the plan too, but they're right. kind of tied together. But that's it. Ultimately, a, um, a preservation plan should lead to a, a really useful ordinance for everyone, the city and for property owners. No, definitely. Owners. And that was like, I think one of the other things we had is, yeah, I recommend needed code changes. So that's hopefully something that we definitely want to. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that those are aligned as well. I have another high level objective for the city and the board to think about. It goes back to what Barb Paul said at the preservation celebration. And of course, she's been in the business a long time as well as me. And we were thinking about preservation and saving buildings. And her whole feeling was, and this has happened with the new, younger generation preservationists, they've gotten too tied to the standards, to preserving things in place, and they've lost the big picture, which is we want to save buildings. And so I think we have an opportunity in Littleton to talk about that. What does it mean to save a building? 
Mm -hmm. And um, what is the most important thing to save about the building? I mean, one example is roofs. I mean, everybody wants to have original roof on there. Roofs get changed every 20 years. But the roof is the most important thing that saves the building. And uh, so you want, you want, we want to be broader in how we, uh, we define saving buildings in Littleton, saying that, uh, you know, it's the building that's important. The changes are going to occur over time, so some are more significant than others. Um, like windows and stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to roofs and those kind of things, I think we want to just tell people, we want to we save the, the basic feeling, location, structure, but we're not doing museum stuff, right? We want to make it clear this isn't about preserving museum objects. Mm -hmm. We don't have any museum objects. Yeah, Littleton. we've always said, you know, downtown or any part of Littleton does not exist in a diorama. Mm -hmm. It's a, a real living place. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very hard thing to, to, to get to, but somehow we have to get to it. It's basically being more liberal in your approach than conservative in your approach. I mean, one example I can give you is the Presbyterian Church on Littleton Boulevard, where the state wanted the wood roof to go back on. This is a long time ago, 1998. And I said, no, we can't put a wood roof on there. It has to be metal, which is what the church proposed. And the reason for that is metal roof will last 50, 60 years. Wood roof will last 20 years. And the church couldn't afford replacing the wood roof. Mm -hmm. And as long as you meet texture, color, all those things, it has green roof, it has texture. You don't know that it wasn't originally a wood roof. Mm -hmm. Those are just things to talk about. But it's not so easy because you still are dealing with neighboring properties, particularly in districts. Mm -hmm. And you have to follow those kind of guidelines because one property owner here is preserving something special way the neighbor need to accommodate it accordingly. So, but, but, well, I was gonna say, so then we need to bake that balance into whatever high level objectives. We can you bake it into it in the discussion. I think it becomes yeah. a philosophical discussion. When we start the public outreach, we we talk about that. And maybe we bring Barbara Paul back and have her talk about what she's thinking after doing this. Because things have changed a lot over time. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And so it sounds like maybe we need to have like further conversation about like, what is Littleton's preservation approach? What is Littleton's preservation? What's our goal? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Big goal. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a balance between it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. I don't want to derail that at all, but that goes on all the time in car restoration. It's, it's like always. you restore it just like the factory came from the factory. Is it okay to have hot rods and, you know, a uh, uh, 46 Ford that's canary yellow or whatever and a head scoop and still on the road? It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's just something. Yeah. I mean, we have a downtown district that has buildings that are, that has a, a significant um, time frame from 1890 to 1970. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of architecture in there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of materials in there. A lot of changes have occurred. Yeah, a lot of changes to building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Littleton doesn't represent any particular period. Littleton Boulevard's tighter. Downtown represents 120 years of architecture, mm -hmm. and it's going to continue to yeah. add on to that. Yeah, yeah. And we want the new buildings to complement the old, but allow us to grow. Mm -hmm. And still be new, still look new. Yeah. yeah. It's not Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, were there any critical, like high level objectives um, that weren't previously mentioned so far? Perfect. Um, well, maybe outreach. Okay. How, do, how yeah. much outreach do we do? Outreach and educate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think the scouts talked about that a lot. I just think back in terms of the 2030 plan that we worked on in the 19. 2008 or nine, it was a comp plan before this current mm -hmm. comp plan that was shelved. But um, we had like 30 meetings all over the city and invited people to come and just talk about the city's comp plan. We could do that with historic preservation. We did that a little bit in the 1990s, we were developing the ordinance. But if you have a lot of outreach meetings neighborhood meetings, people talk about 
their neighborhood, their buildings, their, the, the history, what they like about Littleton. Mm -hmm. I think uh, getting all that out um, will help define where the plan will go and help mm -hmm. preserve the city. And also in that outreach, which you have talked a great deal about and you want to do, um, you know, what Laura was talking about in her neighborhood, she, you know, cruises around her neighborhood and she sees, you know, things that are, are happening that, right. so that, that's. Outreach is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. And so it sounds like there's two components. There is an outreach and education plan as part of making the plan, but then the plan itself is going to, to kind of guide us on outreach moving forward as a historic preservation program not necessarily with a specific aim in mind but like right now how, how do we ongoing education and outreach is, is definitely going to be need to, I, I think should be a part of the plan with the realization also that you can do as much outreach as you want and still people don't notice it so and and and, and, and capacity you know what i mean like yeah i think that that would be 30 meetings for this preservation plan. That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't think that, but, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, I don't think that that's feasible for us <laughs> at this time. But we have to, um, but, 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 but no, similarly, like having community meetings, neighborhood meetings and the like, like I think, yeah, those are important. Informal. Um, yeah, we'll, definitely, definitely. We'll work with the Historic Globes Inc. perhaps, maybe some other entities can be involved where you just have neighborhood meetings, maybe do like precinct captains, you know, you find some people that hold a local meet. I went to one on Crocker Street, mm -hmm. and where a representative from the board would just go and talk to people. That's the education component, and let mm -hmm. them know where the resources are. Mm -hmm. it, it does take more time, but and as we find, the city can do all the outreach it wants with all these meetings and stuff we're trying to do, but people don't pay attention. They have to go to them, and I think that's going to be the key with preservation because it's so emotional. We're going to have to reach out more to the people mm -hmm. And that kind of feeds into the plan. It's going to be a, you know, walk, chicken and hen type thing. You know? mm, yeah. I was going to say, too, kind of to Rick's point, like maybe finding people where they are, like maybe mm -hmm. at, at events, yeah. you know, like Western Welcome Week. I mean, I don't know if it would make sense to be in the parade, but maybe in downtown Littleton afterwards or like the Arts and Crafts Town Fair Hall. at the at Kettering, mm -hmm. um, like where... Little ten residents who are engaged might go, or maybe more engaged. Yeah, we used to do a table with HLI. Yeah, yeah. Always Western Welcome Week, and then you know the um, meet, meet greet, greet and eats. So, mm -hmm. You know, people would come up, and they they boy did they ever share their stories and <laughs> why why they wanted to. I will say I, I have had trouble getting engagement at Meet, Greet, and Eat so yeah, far. Okay. The free swag is people love, I mean, I've had people who just will go through and, and get everything. And then exit right out of the tent. And <laughs> someone else will come in right out of the oh, tent. I like to call that adult trick-or-treating. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> and I'm like, do you have any questions for the planners? They're like, nope. We should nope, just have I would copies. like that pencil. We should just have copies of the ULUC, just the historic preservation. Yeah, and that will be yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come back in 15 minutes, answer a quiz, right. and then yeah. you get yes. your pencil. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, Incentivize people. I would suggest another, another focal point on this outreach. And we focus on Paige, generation, Amy's generation, people who grew up in Littleton in the 60s live here now, what do they see as what do they see as important to the community? Yeah. And where do they see the future going? Because it's a different value than those who were born in the 1940s here. And it takes away the downtown buildings, which are basically just old buildings now, and it, it helps define how the city grew. Because they're here when the city grew in the 1950s and 60s. I mean, Paige's grandfather yeah, I was going to say they were two very different. They're very different. Yeah, and Littleton generation. needs to move forward. We're kind, of get, we're kind of stuck with the downtown, and we need to get out of the downtown. Yeah. That's what we've been talking about for a long time anyway. It's not new. Right. We've been talking about it for like 20 years. We've got to get out of the downtown area to, to the rest the, of the city. Littleton Boulevard. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and I can imagine, like, I think it's like 1970 seems like it was a long time ago, but 1980 doesn't seem like it was that no. long ago. Right. And 
that's now 40 that's years 40 ago or years, like exactly when I was growing up and building houses in the 90s were going up like those still seem like new houses to me you yeah. know but pretty soon they're going to be historic <laughs> you know and what is the you point? mentioned South Park like South Park is coming up on 40 yeah yeah the word on the street right now that I'm hearing is a lot of concern about economic development um how so yeah like um like there's no grocery store close. It's all on the, the perimeter of yeah. Wilmington. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's they've moved no. out of the center where they used yes. to be. Yes. So there's a lot of concern about economic development. Woodlawn. Um, yeah, because the, it used to be Albertsons or Safeway. 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 Yeah. Safeway. Yeah. 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 Like somebody Arches. asked me the other day, why why can't the city of Wilmington get Trader Joe's to come in and take one of those empty spots you've oh, got? That would be city. awesome. Yeah. And I thought, she's right. That's, that's an economic concern. So yeah. I, it doesn't Absolutely. fit in there. But... That's what I hear. And I, I think one of the things I'm hearing in this too is like well, one of the things was identified from the survey, and I guess I see this co-location is like one of the things we identified from the survey was all of these strip malls that may not, you know, like we need some reuse strategies for them. We need some plans for them, some direction specifically for the strip malls because we're hearing from developers that they're not, you know, everyone wants to build the new shiny facility on a right. corridor. Um, so how, yeah, I think that that's a great idea. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think, I think that that's a really cool idea in the sense that like Woodlawn is what it is and finding and helping tenants or people to go there because I'm sure developers are looking at it with the intention of scraping it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we could fill it with things that were in leases that were long term, it would help to preserve it without us having to do much. Right. You know, but like getting a Trader Joe's in there would bounce it instead of... Just things like that where the yeah. city seeks to to keep maybe the strip mall but bring in develop, bring in businesses, businesses the city that would needs. thrive there. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. even like like a Marzik or like a yeah. um, Tony's or something. Yeah. That would be yeah. Yeah. We used to have a Tony's. Yeah, next yeah. to the Safeway on the I know. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Yeah. There was. Tony's yeah. used to be right there on Ridge and um, Broadway. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know that there is a rule or something about big grocery stores have to be a certain distance um, apart yeah yeah that's true but i think that like trader joe's and tony's or things like that would be an exception i'm not sure and even places like i'm sure this would be like nooch um i don't know, I don't know if you guys have ever been to nooch on south broadway it's like a little vegan shop it's a it's a very small but very like well stocked little grocery stores you can nice. go in there very quickly get a couple of fruit yeah, i mean like it's very very nice it's very small but um, and, it, and it's also because a lot of people now like to ride their bikes. Well, mm -hmm. quite yeah, frankly, yeah. from where I live in the center of Littleton, I'm not riding my bike to Littleton Boulevard and, and Broadway to go to the King Supers or go to the Safeway at Mineral. That's way too far. And there's a lot of hills, hills too. Right. So you want yeah. something so that people kind of stay and can do their business in the city. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I agree. Totally. And like usually when people are going to King Supers, they're getting such loads you know like people are doing yeah. weekly grocery shopping or bi-weekly grocery shopping because of where it's located. Um, yeah exactly right. a lot of these places it might be easier to do these shorter more consistent right. biking or right. walking it'd be great to get on my bike and run down and get a dozen eggs yeah, yeah exactly that kind yeah, yeah, of yeah. Stuff. so that's the kind of stuff i hear and well, i would ride with eggs on my bike a little bit too much about grocery stores. Sorry. Safeway has anyway. had seven locations yes, in the city, have. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. and it, yeah, none yeah. of them have been successful. And there well, is a Safeway right across but the, the street the, on. But the <laughs> community is different now. now. <laughs> no, but the thing with Woodlawn, and I can speak to this because we've been talking about Woodlawn since 1987 when I moved here. We've been involved with three or four plants. That is a critical development. What will put people there are small businesses that draw people. Right. And mm -hmm. like Cherry Cricket and Lost Coffee, and then probably with Loads and Brewery, hopefully that'll be successful. Um, those small businesses are beginning to draw the neighborhoods in. If the neighborhoods come in, then there'll be a redevelopment. But Woodlawn's critical from the preservation board because a third of our mid century modern buildings are in that right. park. Yeah. 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 Up and down Daytona, Gallup, yeah. Windermere. Yeah. Yeah. So, how that develops. And preserving a mid-century character is going to be critical. And it's something we have to address. And I think we just have a, to assume something's going to happen at Woodlawn because it's it's, yeah. it's the biggest piece of land. Mm -hmm. And the building's a tier three building. So 
What does that mean? It means it's a lower tier of the, it's tier one, two, three, and four. Oh, okay. It's tier three because it's lost. Because it's been so altered, right? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. But you know, you, you can see Woodlawn kind of coming back. Yeah. It's and little, you know the little, little shopping center on Rich Road and Broadway. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and and people seem to really like that one in particular, Always like the fine. castle yeah. and then like the the wagon. The, the, the strip mall they were. were. Yeah, yeah. I I, 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 I have quite that. a few people talk to me about how they like that. I love it. Yeah. No, it's very charming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So it sounds like yeah, like figuring out. I think this goes back to that theme of like, how do we get ahead? Um, yeah, and so I've been putting some and of this, these notes the underneath that heading of, of how do we kind of anticipate some of those changes and um, get the the uh, mechanisms in place to kind of guide the development. So we don't forward. have to react. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can try to get ahead. Yeah. I think one of the things that came up is you know really looking at businesses that would be good in these type of buildings and advertising it and like our like that would be so helpful. And there's a little irony there, because like in Woodlawn, in the parking lot, there's two very popular food trucks, R&R, mm -hmm. &R, and then I'm forgetting the other one lost something. And and those are, you know, people are there very frequently. They have pretty good food. They're very stable. Um, and both of them have spoken about wanting to find a permanent location <coughs> in Littleton, but having having trouble doing that. So I go there um, for lunch, the Mexican one. Yeah. R&R yeah. &R has the best you know. breakfast tacos I've ever had, so... Plug in them, they're great, great food. Okay, I'm going to try about that, that Oh, yeah, I'll let you know. We do Friday <laughs> breakfast, I'll let you know. Perfect. <laughs> and they're small little portions, which is even better. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> um, so the next piece of this is, what are the critical tasks necessary to make the preservation plan? So one of the things I have, in all caps again, is survey whole city. One of the other things I already have under here is, you know, direct outreach to property owners, initially, as we're developing this preservation, early in these conversations, reaching out to them. Um, what are some other, like, critical... we could also reach out to tenants to yeah. come here at mm -hmm. the same time. Yeah. Nettie. The actual oh, business is Bobby. Because sometimes right. the business is different than the property. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's okay. You know, um, but um, one of the things I think uh, the critical tasks is um, you've got this project on your desk, and so identify, you know, the first thing is always, well, who do I know? Who can I call? What kind of relationships can I um, exploit? And there are, you know, tons um, that, of, of people that would absolutely take your call and, and offer up help and mm -hmm. advice. People, you know, in the field, they just love to do that. And I, I really identify what, what resources are just right there mm -hmm. for you. Like knowledge resources. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One other big strength we have that we need we could tie better to preservation is the Lothan Museum. Because mm -hmm. there's a tremendous amount of resources there. They're putting a lot of stuff online. Yeah. And, and, and so yeah. make it easier to use resources, the issue. That's that's a city issue, but it's very difficult to use those resources at the library okay. and the, in the museum. Okay, and I'll, I'll definitely talk with them. And um, you know, one of the conversations, another study session, I, I kind of um, hope a topic I hope to discuss in a later study session is this idea of like you know, there's preserving and then there's memorializing. And I, I think in historic preservation, um, we tend to focus on like what is there and existing and, and keeping that. But there's a lot that's already been lost, like that we already know yes. about. And um, what would that mean to reflect that in the built environment? Like I think the thing I think of the most is um, how much the the course of the Platte River has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at old Stanford maps, it's pretty wild oh. as to how we've altered the course of that river. And so, what would it look be like? And, and so, I think of the museum as like being the critical lead agency on some of those type tasks that like are coming from us, but you know, kind of being carried. So I do think that there is a, a great opportunity for much deeper partnerships, like as we identify projects and as we look more at like memorializing what has been lost. Um, well, at, at the July celebration, I took my husband who could really care less about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And he came home and said, <coughs> wow, did you see all the pictures of the things that we've lost? And I thought, okay, he yeah. paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. it. It made a difference. That's something else. If people 
you talk about loss, but if people don't see a picture of what's lost, mm. they don't know. Mm. I heard a story. I've been those pictures for a long time. Yeah. I, was, I heard a story about this on CPR the other day. They just did this in Denver. Apparently, there's like three or four new plaques about Denver's Chinatown that mm -hmm. was lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, I've heard that the old plaques were very inadequate. To yes. Yeah. 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 So. so, Scout, we didn't age. put the word memorialized in capital letters because we can do a whole lot more in Littleton to preserve its heritage through memorializing. I mean, we have Beacon Park, mm -hmm. but I was walking down to South Platte Park, you know, they have, they talk about the rough and ready flour mill, and they talk about Richard Little's house, but the plaques, which are put up by the rotor, in the wrong spot. They need to be reversed. Oh, oh funny. You know, Richard Little's house over by where Rough and Ready was, really? and then Rough and Ready by where Richard Little's cabin was. <laughs> okay. Oh. So those kind of things need to be kind of fixed. But that's, uh, no, the rotary did those. Oh, okay. The plaques were stolen years ago. Oh, okay, okay. I see, cars. I see. I was like, they didn't put them in the right spot. <laughs> but yeah. you know, we have we have some critical. We have some important parks like Stern Park. We have some landscapes yeah. we might want to talk about. We have that little Orion Memorial over there in the um, Rose Garden. Nobody knows what that is. It's a memorial to a five-year-old girl that passed away yep. by one of the families. Mm -hmm. Old families in Littleton. And yeah. maybe over where uh, Marathon used to be, there's yeah. an opportunity to yeah, do some interpretive too. signage there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the Marathon thing. was just like, it was you know, huge. Yeah. 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 Marathon coming settled. to town was a the reason huge. change, change in the A lot of folks are here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we can memorialize yeah. the dog track along the river. I mean, there's a lot we can do along the, the river. Race, the horse track. track. The horse track, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. Track. yeah, yeah, Centennial Downs. Downs. I mean, again, City. reflecting yeah. the name, <laughs> you know. but not in any way that would connect people to the sign yeah. that they're seeing called Centennial Downs is related to. Yeah. So that's a good way to yeah. say it, memorialize, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. the memorialize. we got to find Dave Gruson's boyhood home. It's torn oh. down. Just, is it was torn just, down? Just, was just torn Who's down. Who's that? Oh, no. Dave Gruson, the, mu the musician. Really? He lived in Littleton? Oh. Yeah, he grew up here. Made okay, I was like, I had no yeah, idea. No idea. He's one of the most yeah. famous people in Littleton. Yeah, yeah. his jewelry that, oh. that recently closed over at Mineral and Broadway yeah. used to be in Woodlawn. Yeah. And that was his dad. Oh, Henry's? Wow. Yeah, really? My and it used to be downtown. It used to be downtown. Henry's. It used to be downtown, then he moved to Woodlawn. I didn't know that was it. I did not know that. Oh, so it was just torn down? Oh, where was it? Yeah, where was it? Was, it was, um, I think on corner of Kernis and Power. It's right, right, it was right there. Oh, it was oh, a nondescript little a You mean the one that's right next to, um, I'd have to look and see. Graceful Cafe? But it's, no, no I think it's on the other, it's other, other side, side but it's, I, oh, sorry. Because when we, I saw a special on public yeah. television, I said, I gotta go find where he lived, and it's, okay. the house is gone. Uh, but he had come to Littleton around 1990 and gave a free concert. That's for cool. Second Century Fund. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. Pat still has some stuff from that. But he came um, and gave a free concert. I mean, he's one of the biggest people in the world. It was a big deal for that. What the was his centennial celebration? It was huge. What was his instrument or what? Piano. He's piano. A, piano. Okay. Yeah, but no, you've heard all his songs. I mean, he has influence. We'll look him up later. <laughs> Go look up the PBS special on him. He's still okay. alive. Yeah. And then Alan True, the muralist who um, has murals in, in the, uh, all over Denver and the Brown Palace and mm. stuff like that. And mm. he designed the Wyoming license plate. He drew that oh, cowboy. The cowboy. Oh, wow. Cool. Cowboy. And he, wow. Is, he lived in Littleton. Interesting. Which so is here's another place we can partner yeah. with the museum. Then. Yeah. yeah. And by doing memorials and identifying sites, it takes it puts preservation in a broader category of heritage preservation mm -hmm. removes the focus from buildings which gets people to understand and, and appreciate it a little bit more yeah and most people don't see the buildings anyway they like to read these kind of things mm -hmm. there's a lot of examples from all over the world of what we can do i know i talked to gail keely she says when she gives her talks downtown she only mentions three buildings Oh, yeah. If I gave a talk, I wouldn't talk about anything but the building. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 those are, but people like those kind of stories. So it, true. Yeah. to tie preservation into the stories is really important. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. example on Littleton Boulevard, the BIA headquarters, the first headquarters of Colorado was in, in Littleton, which is 
kind of interesting, right? Absolutely. And one of the first American Indian Movement protests to happen in Colorado happened at that building, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pretty significant piece of history as well. And we have an original Taco Bell right next door. What? Oh, oh yes. it's, that is it's what, that Yummy is a Station proto, now, right? Yeah. A prototype Taco what? Bell. Yeah. And Yummy so Station is pretty good, actually. Yeah. They are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have like a lot of we have a lot of prototype stuff in, in Littleton. Mm -hmm. And we and have a lot of apartments like that are McDonald's. important in Littleton, too. Yeah, and that's something I'm very yeah. interested in, too. And I, I'm seeing more and more that, like, through, as we kind of talk about some of these more open-ended conversations, I'm seeing more and more, like, partnerships we can make with economic development, with the museum, with our housing authority, you know, especially looking at these apartments and stuff. How do we preserve that, meet the, is there a way to do that and meet the affordability mission of the city? I mean, I think there's a lot of ways that we can um, use preservation and preservation principles to help you know, not only preserve our legacy and protect it, but also meet other contemporary issues. Well, the difficulty is preservation is going to get complex with economic development because of where we're going to do the economic development is where all the old commercial properties are. The residential right. areas aren't going to be impacted. We talked earlier all. about balance. And you got to balance that. Balance, but I also think this is where we come in you know, with things in advance, yeah. Yeah, rather than not reacting. Like, here are the design guidelines we're looking at. Here's the overlay district specific. You know what I mean? I think that that stuff might be, uh, would also really help with that. And you could capitalize on this, the fact that you're in a historic building in a very historic area. Mm -hmm. And I do think, you know, like working with a lot of the property owners downtown, the ones I've worked with at least, like I do think that there is a appetite and a passion for many developers who see historic preservation as part of like, you know, the business model for the area. They see that now. It's, that's what's changed over the last 30 years. And that, that's great. That's well, great because it's part of the draw also to that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and the property is very, exp property is very expensive. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think I have enough um, to complete our letter of intent. Um, so uh, the next step in this is I'll, I'll work on that letter of intent. My goal is to have that done by the end of the month. Um, so by the end of next week have that letter of intent submitted, and once I hear back, I'll notify you guys if it was red, yellow, or green. Um, How? I'll, I'll, I'll notify you via email. Mm -hmm. so one more thing on yes. surveys. Yeah. Um, like we're going to have, you have to fire, hire some professionals Lights. to do some surveys, but there are other surveys, because people like to do surveys. I mean, I know Kim loves surveys, so do I. Yeah, I've never um, done one, but I totally would do it. But but it we can develop, um, surveys with the board and through historic Littleton um, of certain types of buildings, say like the mid-century houses, just go around and identify where all those are. Yeah. Or the agricultural houses, but then you're going to have to hire someone to do the context. That's what, surveys oh, okay. easy, the context is the hard part. Okay. And that requires the academic approach. Um, that's very good to know too, because I think one of the things that we did at the survey work plan discussion was we talked about like, what are our surveying priorities? And then matching those with strategies. So like the single family homes, we were very much like these should be surveyed. We could do that as a collective, as a group. We are looking for the iPads. Um, so, so that is something that we are working towards is putting on some communal event um, where there's like a, a group of people who go out and survey stuff. Um, we're looking for that infrastructure. And then some of it was, you know, like what can the board do with the expertise we have here? And then what is it? Um, that we need the, the true experts for. And, and context is something that hadn't come up for that. Um, context is crazy. So that's like pretty, I will definitely note that. Because you can't determine what's significant without a context. So, and we also have a couple residential areas that were identified in 2001 survey that are National Register eligible. I think focusing in those areas, because there's pressure being put on those, particularly Littleton, the area north of Lodzen Boulevard and east of Windermere, that whole area is a potential historic district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do you want it a district? I don't know. But I know there's pressure being put on scraping off on those houses. Yeah. And yeah, the neighborhoods, the neighbors are. are complaining. So one way to build support Boulevard, is... South of Boulevard, east of Windermere? Or north, north, north of Littleton Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. If you go to the 2001 report, it's identified in there. What's the other one? Um, there's a little one up corner of Windermere and Ridge Road, which is one of the first developments. Um, <laughs> then, of course, Littleton Highlands. You got Loudoun Street, but that whole area mm -hmm. was identified as a historic district. That begs the question of, do we do overlays or districts? And 
I think there needs to be a discussion of the advantages and disadvantages of both. Yeah. And the answer is we don't know at this point. And we don't know yes. the answer to that? Yeah. Um, and I'll have to go back and compare this, because we had several single-family homes identified as pressing in the last survey work plan. So I think we might have just touched on some of these. I'll go back and look at the geographies and kind of compile that list. If you look at the 2001 report, you can see how the city grew. Mm -hmm. And those developments, the mid-century developments, I mean, some of those are just like really awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. we have little houses scattered all over. I keep finding them, mm -hmm. popped here and there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh man, there was one that we that recently got in trouble for a fence issue they had. They didn't have a conforming fence, but the design of the house was phenomenal. Right. Yeah, great house, great great example of mid-century modern. A new house. No, no, it was an older house. Uh, but they had done, they had done like an, some additions, and so they needed an inspection. So that's how we figured out that they had a, an improper fence. It wasn't um, on Windermere Street, was it? No, 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 no. It was, it was. What's her name? Who's a, who just retired? She, um, the, the news person. Anne. Oh, Anne yeah. Trujillo, who lives by you. Oh yeah, yeah. My this was a vacant. She did a great job with fixing her house and adding on to it. Nice. Yes. It looks like it should have been that way all yeah. along. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. She did a great job inside. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. That's good, Scout. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, this is quite a lot of information, and I, I think that this is going to be just the best preservation plan ever made. I <laughs> think so. I, mean, yes. I, I think it's yeah. just great that you're doing this. <laughs> thank you. No, I'm, I'm glad that we're doing it together. So yeah. I will absolutely be leaning on HPB for help throughout this process. So. <laughs> Thank you. Will do. <laughs> Will do. Um, oh, um, I just want to make a note that could feed into this. Uh, my wife's giving a talk called The Littleton Way on September 7th. It talks about the political development of Littleton and what Littleton did in the 60s and 70s. She's given a talk a couple of times before. It'll be at Vita. I can send it out to you so you can listen to it. Where are we? At Vita. Yeah, she'll give it some more. Every time we do it, we add more things to it. but. It's, it's a history of the development of Littleton from the 50s to about the 90s. OK. Oh, Could you cool. send us like where it's going to be? Yes, I'll send a note out to you guys. Okay. It's going to be at Vita? It'll be at Vita. Oh, OK. And yeah. yeah. At 6 o'clock on the 7th. OK. 6 o'clock on the 7th. And the last one, we had Jim Woods come and Charlie Blossom came, and Jim Woods, and they made some corrections to the talk. And Larry Borger was there? Who? Larry Borger. Or Larry Borger. Yeah, these are people. Sally Parsons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have pictures of people when they were younger in there, <laughs> like Darlie Whiting when she's she was younger and dancing. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a great dancer. <laughs> Fiasco. It's a whole new look at Darlie. It is. <laughs> whole, well, yeah. I mean, it's her legs. I mean, she'll say it too. I mean, you look at the pictures because there's, but she did all these fiasco things in that one picture. So, and she's she's proud of it, believe me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's As she should be. She should be. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that would be, that could feed into helping identify context for this. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that, that sort of distinctive character, for sure. Good. All right. Any other comments, questions by the board? All right. I will end the meeting at 10.58. All right. 90 minutes on the dot.